everybody. Welcome back to this episode of The Real Housewives of Atlanta. And you know, all the shows have finally gotten juicy. So we start out with Portia and um, Sheree. Sheree, you down here shopping for some $9,000 doors. You better go down to Lowe's. I don't know what antique door shop, shop you at, but you better go be trying to be going to... Uh, Home Depot or Lowe's or Marvin's or somewhere and get you some $200 and $300, some $500 doors and not no $9,000 doors for no wine cellar. What's wrong with you? They say you don't even live in Chateau Chiray. You better be uh holding on to your coins. Every coin you make at Real Housewives of Atlanta, you can't run, go spend it. You better be trying to bank something. But anyway... Portia, <laughs> that's my girl. Come on through, Portia. Gonna ask Sheree, is it true if she married? Because they got a picture of Sheree uh, sitting down here uh, with a wifey t-shirt on at the uh, prison talking about uh, um, with her prison boo. She asked Sheree if she married. Sheree said she not married. But Sheree, why you got pictures posted in your shirt with the man if you not married? You knew what the blogs was going to do. Like, everybody, they was going to say you was married because that's how you presented to everybody. So, it made me feel like that Sheree is doing that to concrete her spot on the show to make sure um, she got some gossip going on to keep her relevant. I don't know what y'all think. Because if you put on a wifey t-shirt and you boot up with a man and it went, went down to the prison, uh... What I mean, you down after prison with the man in a wifey shirt. Come on, help me out with this, y'all. Aren't you putting it out to the world that y'all married? Y'all think she low-key married? Because <laughs> to me, it looked like Sheree the one really married and she hiding in Kenya. Got a stage marriage. But I think Kenya married for real, though, y'all. Out of all the times I don't believe her, I believe her now. But anyway, uh, Portia and uh, I mean... Kenya and Candy go over to uh, Cynthia's, honey. Candy here. Candy talking about, by the time I get to come over. Well, Candy, why you ain't been over before now? But like, uh, she said, like Cynthia said, it ain't her fault your group got back together and you've been busy now. But anyway, I I like how Candy do. This is what I, what I like about Candy because she just gonna get out right with it and tell Kenya it 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 just looked like this. If y'all supposed to be best friends, y'all supposed to be that close, you would think your best friend would know who, if you dating when you gonna get married or at least get be invited to the mar to the wedding. And like Kenya said, uh, Cynthia said. You know, it would have been nice to say she done met him, done seen him, done knew about him or something. She's supposed to be your friend. So how's a friend? Can she have your back when you kept her out of the loop? So it's hard to be a good friend to somebody when you've been left out of the loop and kept in the dark about everything. Like, come on. you it, If she's supposed to be that close to you, you can't be doing her like that. So um, anyway, I'm glad that uh, Cynthia told Kenya how she felt and, and the excuses like, like Cynthia said, they kind of for fetch. They in New York. Candy goes to New York. Cynthia goes to New York. Like Cynthia said, <laughs> she just come from New York. They could have had dinner together. So see what I'm saying? As much as Cynthia traveled to New York, they could have had dinner together. It's no excuse why she shouldn't have already told Cynthia. But I'm going to need her to hurry up and correct this. Because had this been Nene or anybody else doing Cynthia like this, Kenya would have been in their ear. Um, t trying to turn um Cynthia against them. So, so anyway. Portia got <laughs> the million dollar matchmakers. That's what we gonna call them over here. Uh, trying to build her a white <laughs> a white man. I don't know why she she uh want a white man, but trying to build her a white man. But anyway, uh, they done told her out the gate. <laughs> she running them off before she get them. Because her house already intimidating her. She got a playground, boy room, girl room that she got her wigs living up in and her ring lights. <laughs> they already done told her, honey, you, 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 um, you, you gonna fail before you even make it out the gate. So we're gonna see how this bald head white man with a little beard gonna turn out <laughs> see what they gonna come up with because they gonna blow up their database trying to find somebody that can uh 
put up with uh Portia. She should have had them to add to the list somebody that can handle dingy people. Bless Portia Hart. We love you, Portia girl. We love you. You we love you, Portia. Anyway, but um so Cynthia has twenty five percent still in bar two. Is that what she call it? Because we know bar one then we we hear that another. So they say P, uh Peter popping out in uh over in the Carolinas, honey. But uh shout out to Peter, you finally got your dream business. Like to me, I feel like that's all he was wanting with his his I feel like Peter was wanting his dream business. He wanted to be somebody, he wanted to be known, he wanted to be popular, he wanted to have his own spot that was jumping like that was his dream to be up there like a A lister with a number one business and I feel like maybe he finally getting it to come true and it's his, you know. But I don't feel like it's over with him and Cynthia yet. They still have too strong of a chemistry. They still liking to each other too much. Uh, <laughs> Cynthia over there, what she said, she read a boy her pot of that Uncle Ben's rice. She about to jump Peter Bones. Peter might be about to get him a little booty before he leave out of town because Cynthia is and I'm going to say it, Peter look way better than Will. Will, I, this whole thing with Will, I feel like Will is an opportunist. I don't, it's something about him I ain't caring for. Ever since that episode when he was ready to go to Lake Bailey and he just really in a hurry to get over there in Cynthia's pretty panties. I'm not feeling Will. I would rather her try again with Peter. And Peter right, Cynthia looked like she about 32 years old. She is a gorgeous woman. I wish he appreciated more when, when he had her. Don't be on social, uh, social media, want one uh, on people's chest and what? Now he didn't want one. He just, you know, like that slick. You know what I'm saying? Y'all saw it. I ain't got to explain it. But yeah, anyway. So then we got Sheree, uh, with Tierra and her her kids. And um, she she going to finally have the conversation with them that's been Okay, waiting. Sheree finally has the conversation with her kids. And her kids are so sweet. Like most kids, Tiara sees her as Wonder Woman. Most kids see their moms as, uh, as um, Wonder Woman. Like, they consider them as strong and, you know... In, in control, in charge, and so it's hard to imagine such things. Um, I myself wondered if the kids had talked about it amongst themselves once they seen it on the on the on the blog, blogs or whatever. But Callie said she tried her dad tried to talk to her about it, and she she wasn't even trying to hear it. She was mad at it, at him and drove off. So I wish Sheree could have talked to them way sooner than she she did. I feel like with Kyrie. Ky Cairo, to me, I think that he's seen it, he heard it, but since his mom didn't say anything, to me, I feel like he probably, he wasn't sure if it was true. Like, he was just probably like, I don't know if it's true or not, because if it was true, mom would have said something. So, I feel like for him, now that she's invalidated and let him know that it was true, I think he supports her, he loves her. Or whatever, and I'm like Sheree said, they that's their dad. They didn't want him to look at. She didn't want them to look at, look at him bad, which you know. And I am proud of Sheree for doing it because a lot of women they would have tried to paint an ugly picture and make him be the bad person, make him look bad. They'd have drug him, and I'm glad that she didn't destroy their relationship with their dad or whatever. But I feel like it's gonna be more to this story to come, and I hope they show it because I feel like now that they know that it was true. And they know what was what's going to happen. And that they're older. Especially Cairo. I think they are going to feel some type of way. And in any situation you're going to feel some kind of way. You can't expect your kids not to feel some kind of way. That's their mom. Like. If, if somebody. If my husband was to do that to me. You think. <laughs> you think my kids is going to go side with him. They going to be on team mom's side. Any. Child. You know. In a home is going to do. In brought up like that's gonna do that because mom's gonna come first now but uh i want to see more about this situation like how they handle it or whatever and um candy 
gets the baby swimming lessons. Candy, honey, I'm a USA swim coach, a Red Cross water safety instructor, baby. Let me teach your and a lifeguard. Let me teach your babies how to swim. I'm good at what I do. I have my baby swimming and that's ace age. Honey, by day five, them kids be swimming because your girl is good, honey. This girl is good at what she does for a living. Yes, honey. So I need to be in y'all area going to teach some swim lessons because, you know, up here it gets a little slow. Black people scared to put their kids in water up here. But I need to come on down to Atlanta and spread my business because, honey, I'm going to tell you, I teach them from six months old. We do mommy and me classes all the way up to like in their 80s because some people just say before they pass away, they want to learn how to swim. So. I'm proud of her for getting swimming lessons. So many people do not get swimming lessons for their children, especially people of color. And I applaud Candy for going on and um getting water safety instructor. It's something that the lady didn't do. I don't know if they just didn't film it that we do. That's very important Um, that I didn't approve of as far as water safety. But anyway, um... Then Candy, she goes to see Miss Riley. God, Riley is so freaking grown. It's good to see um, Todd's daughter. She is cute as she want to be. But, um, yeah, Riley is grown, and I like the little activity that they do. I've always wanted to do that. Go when you put in the little wind tunnel thing and go up. Because they, I, I, I did it one time. Um, well, I tried to do it one time when I was younger at the, like, Space and Rocket Center. But the line was too long. And after we waited in line for, like, two hours, we had to leave, you know, and, and head back home. Because we was, like, in Huntsville, Alabama. We were so far from home um, at the um, NASA Center. We didn't get to. But anyway, on to... Um, it's something else candy. I want to touch base on. Um, candy was talking about traditional families. I'm like Candy. I was blessed to grow up in a traditional family. I had both my parents together. A majority of my family... Um, my cousins grew up with both parents together. And I agree with what she said. It is good to have both parents there. And it's good to have a dad in the home. And I'm going to tell you, having a dad in the home makes a big difference. Especially a good dad in the home that's not, you know, abusive or anything like that. Or, you know, I grew up like that. And it does. It makes all the difference. And I'm going to tell you, in all honesty, it's good to see that interaction on this show. Because more of these shows need that interaction. Because, like, that mess that keeps showing on, on Love and Hip Hop... I'm just so over that. It, we need to see family stuff like what Candy and Todd presents. We need to see that. Fa Black people need to see that family structure, especially because for some reason, people think they're supposed to run around here like basketball wives. And they, uh, and, uh, not basketball wives, but love and hip hop stars. No, we should be forming family structures like what Kim Zosiak has, what Nene has, what Candy has. We need good, stable homes. This is what we need to see. But anyway, Riley trying to do like these kids around here, like here where I stay at, those kids, they come rolling up to school in their parents' G-Wagons um, like they are like they have money, which for Riley, she do got money. Candy put money up for her. But anyway, them kids, see that it don't matter your skin color. They latch onto you and pretend to be your friends the whole three, four years you at the university. Because you roll in a G-Wagon. And they not trying to catch an Uber nowhere or Lyft when they friend got a G-Wagon. And they going to be about that life. That's what they do around here. And Candy is doing right by telling her no. She need to start off with a regular vehicle. Let her form friends for for her. Not for her, who her mother is. But some genuine friends. Because they going to look at her in a materialistic way. And they 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 won't be genuine. Not unless they drive driving a G-Wagon themselves. You understand what I'm saying? But, um... Yeah. But, um... I'm like Candy. I just said it. I'm going to say it again. I'm skeptical about Will, too. I feel like Will is on the come up. Now, here you go. Candy done spit the beans about Will because I ain't even done no research on it myself. She said he been on all these other little palette shows uh, on the Steve Harvey. See, I knew I didn't like him. I knew I did not like this little Will character. Will is on the come up, and he going to come up on Cynthia. He's sending a car for Cynthia. He whining and dying and wooing Cynthia. He finna rule Cynthia just to be on this show. All he looking for is a come up, and Cynthia is about to be his come up. Girl, you better call Peter 
And then she talking about when she get divorced, uh, uh, her friends divorcing too. I don't believe in that because when you spend time with a group of people, y'all form a relationship together. Y'all... I'm like Candy, it's feelings involved because now y'all care about that person. That's y'all friend now. And you can't just tell me when you divorce somebody, I can no longer be friends with that person and I got to turn off. We can't socialize no more because, honey, I'm going to tell you now, I'm not that type of friend. It's not It's not going to happen. I'm a real, true, genuine friend. So once we rock, we rock. Unless he do something to me. Now, if he'd have done something bad, worse to Cynthia... Um, because you know, he, he said that's the extent it went. We don't have no receipts to prove that it went further than that. So that's all we got to go on. But anyway, back on, uh, Will and, um, <laughs> um, Candy inter interrogated Will, which she did. Everybody needed to, she needed to, uh, get down to the T and see what Will going to be all about. And, um, <laughs> when they all with their separate ways. Candy, uh, well, first of all, Candy is right. Ty did take the heat from her folks. You know, they said Ty was out for her money. Candy, he's just out to get you, Candy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have convinced that's all that Ty was on the, the come up. Ty got so tired of hearing the come up, y'all. He like to left Candy at the altar with them lions and tigers and bears. <laughs> but anyway, when they finally go out to talk to each other, Candy, I, what I love about Candy, she gets straight to the T. Cause, and Candy is right. They do, he a nice guy, but they need to take it slow because I'm going to tell you, I just, I'm not, He'll come up. He he need to be on speed dating show because I feel like he need to be on the Bachelorette or something. Anyway, uh, she gonna ask Cynthia who hit it. I was on TV like, who, who, who? But she said the guy she was dating out of LA. So we'll we'll and we'll wait for Andy because we know messy Andy with his messy hair gonna pull it out. Of, we'll pull up pull it out of uh, Cynthia on. On one of them Watch What Happens Live episodes that's yet to come. But anyway, that doggone candy done said, look at the thickness of his hands. Of his hands. Honey, <laughs> That the camera, uh, Cynthia said she wants some big puns, some big, <laughs> big joke. She didn't want no too short. But anyway, the, the camera done zoomed in on his hands. Well, honey, you better not sleep with him. But I ain't gonna say that, but them was some average hands. Them was some average hands, Miss Cynthia. But he's an average man. He's an average Joe. Not a big Joe. He ain't gonna be thick and fill y'all up, baby. He ain't gonna be no Coke bottle. <laughs> But anyway, y'all, Portia went on her blind date. I'm like, Portia, Portia about did it about face and took off. I don't blame her because he's sitting over there looking like he a bounty hunter, Bill Bunsman. He don't look nothing like Portia type. What kind of match service she go to? Nuh-uh. uh, -uh. <laughs> She gonna tell her that her mama's staying with her. She, she gotta be home in 30 minutes. Not be home in 30 minutes like you 18 and you can't miss curfew portion. Tell me I got to be home in 30 minutes because I just kind of snuck out. <laughs> but he done pretty much told Portia she need to uh, get a shot because she got a cob up her butt and she need to loosen up. Cause, But anyway, Portia did give it a try. And then he talked about he was messy. I'm like Portia. I thought he meant like messy as in drama messy. He talking about around the house. And he looked like he may be messy around the house. Garrett, send him on back down to the Bell Bondsman station to run security. No, Portia. We done. That's over. Um, the life coach sitting there, you know, this going to run up uh, Sheree time. She going to have to pay extra. Y'all know Sh Sheree had people running late for everything. But, uh, I'm glad her life coach was here to observe her little telephone call with her bae, with her boyfriend, because he didn't ask her, honey, <laughs> is this a fantasy? Sheree, he didn't ask you, was this a fantasy in your mind? Is it really as real as you say? Because Sheree said this her, this is her uh, soulmate. Honey, that's deep. She done with deep. Like, Sheree really in love with this dude. So, I'm like, uh... 
candy at this point. I hope this man don't come high to Chateau Charade. But I don't know. Like, just looking at the pictures of them together, I just don't feel like I'm more concerned about Will than I am Tyrone. I think you better call Tyrone. <laughs> Charade may um be trying to get married so they can have them conjugal visits. So they may be married and don't nobody know so they can get them conjugal visits. Then he was saying about lifting weight so he could carry her over. Was he trying to set a threshold? What could Sheree hurry up? Y'all see how Sheree cut that man off so uh, we can hear what she was saying? But anyway, she better hope he gonna get out at the end of the year because if not, that's four more years and she says she gonna wait on this man. Y'all, Sheree in love. She done got bit by the bug. But anyway, uh, that's about all of this show that happened with Sheree. Uh, we're going to find out some more information about her man so I can report back to y'all about it. But, uh, I wonder if he know Apollo. <laughs> they, Apollo was in, tr in trouble for federal stuff. I wonder if this was one of his partners in that federal stuff and they just getting around to his part of things. You know what I'm saying? So, I wonder if he want one of them that was in Apollo's clique. You never know, y'all. You don't never know. I'm trying to tell you. you know, it's a small world. But anyway, thank y'all for watching. Be sure to subscribe, comment, share, like, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye.